it recording? Is it recording? Okay. Is it recording? I, I don't see. Oh, yeah. It shows this okay. recording. Okay. All right. Let's um, do it. Let's do it. Um, wonderful human, please introduce yourself. <laughs> well, this wonderful human is me, you know, is talking to another wonderful human. Uh, and my name is uh, Miguel Silveira. I'm a filmmaker and I also teach at Columbia College Chicago. Um, I'm not nervous at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Propaganda here. Uh, no, no, please plug that, man. Yeah. Please. Um, <laughs> congratulations on um, all the film. Um, festivals you've been getting that wonderful film into man i'm proud man. thank you so much it's a long 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 journey <laughs> yes <laughs> um what would you consider to be the best and worst part of what you do i mean the, i think the best the, the best part of what, what we do is really the uncertainty uh of how things work uh it's great not to know exactly what you need to do to get what you want to be because it forces you to to be so many things you know uh and to test many versions of of your personality as you as you go about trying to to make films uh and the worst part uh of what i do is uh, is also you know the the same thing <laughs> so it's unpredictable uh and sometimes it can cause um a lot of problems you know because you don't you don't know for sure um, you know, what, what's, what's the next step is, you know, uh, so it, it, it can cause a lot of problems, financial problems, like, you know, <laughs> family problems, like, you know, and at the same time that unpre uh, in being unpredictable, being, be, having a, a profession that things can go either way, it's super alluring and, and it helps you expand as a person. You also test you, uh, on the spot because you have sometimes to make very tough decisions that you're not ready for. So the same thing that is good about it is also the worst thing about it, in my opinion. I heard that. Um, what inspired you to become a filmmaker? Uh, getting to talk to people, different kind of people, um, different kind of people. I'm curious about uh, being in situations where there's something that is not me, a culture that's not mine. Uh, and by looking at it, you take a little bit of, of that culture, you know, the good and the bad, and that becomes part of you, you know. And I think cinema might be, in the, in, as a modern profession, one of the one of the most important, uh, like professions, that, you know, or path or like way of t choosing how to live your life, that allows you to to have that kind of exchange. So I like to to travel, I like to see people, and cinema allows me to do that with a purpose. So that's the thing that I like the most. All right. Um, describe the perfect film. Um, I don't think the perfect film exists. Uh, I don't think the greatest this or that exists, and that's include and that includes the greatest country on earth doesn't exist. You know, mm -hmm. this is like a logical fallacy. Uh, no country is the greatest country on earth, uh, and if it was, you would not say it is. Uh, and the same thing with film. No film is the greatest film or perfect film. Uh, what I think a good film, a worthwhile, let me put it this way, a worthwhile film to watch and to make is, is the film that uh, a person creates or a group of people creates, knowing that they're doing the best they can at that given moment. This is like the best I can do now and I'm doing it with my heart and I'm doing the right way and I'm doing the way I can right now. And then those films usually turn out to be uh, good and you watch and they become important pieces of history. Uh, it has to come from the heart, also has to be good. Sometimes just things that come from the heart do not render good movies, but the ones that combine that, like if it comes from the heart, it doesn't think of itself as anything other than a movie uh, when it, while it was being made and everybody invests everything they can and, and should in making it. Those are the films that, are, that I like to, to watch. And you know, can list a bunch of completely different films done this way. Uh, that I really appreciate. And I, I hope I can make films like that the rest of my life. I mean, I'm not saying that the one you're promoting is definitely up there and should be on a top 50 list. I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> that would be rude of me. Yeah, I'm definitely saying that. Y'all should see this. Um, you're, you're the best, man. <laughs> Folks, I'm not, I'm not paying this guy one cent. He's telling the truth. Like, uh, that's why, you know, I really appreciate, you know, oh. Didi, man, you're the best. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Jeebus. All right. Oh, okay. I lost my train of thought. Okay. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, number four. <laughs> uh, considering our current climate, um, would you say that it could be tougher to get into this in industry or easier? Both. Uh, I think like, the, the, like the pre-COVID industry is one industry and of course way tougher now because like there's less productions. So the usual path that folks right out of school, you know, let's talk about our school, you know, Columbia, uh, mm. Chicago, people just go back to LA and try, you know, to become interns or whatever it is that f folks do as soon as they're out of, out of college, it will be different and harder now without a doubt. Uh, there's no question. End of story. Uh, uh, it doesn't mean that it's impossible. Uh, it will continue to happen, but the, people have to adapt. And in this adaptation, new ways of making films, new ways of like uh, uh, developing the films through the industry will, will obviously come up. And if folks are attuned to that and they understand that the art form is not gonna be confined uh, to the old, old styles uh, and the old rules, then there's a chance, I'm not saying that it's guaranteed, no one really knows, there's a chance that a good number of people will know how to ride that wave and will become easier for them and for the new generations, folks coming from school, uh, coming out of school right now, to develop their own shtick, develop their own uh, uh, you know, distribution paths and shoot films with cell phones and then actually monetize on that. And then the industry will begin to incorporate. And you see that uh, with, with films like, um, uh, homemade, the homemade series, it's called Homemade, that's plays on Netflix. Very important people, very important filmmakers shot with their cell phones in their homes and it's on Netflix. It's definitely homemade, it looks homemade. Uh, and we would otherwise, back in the day, think as low quality product, uh, uh, think of it as a low quality product. Right now we look at it and we understand that it's just a good product done with, uh, with what people had at their disposal, right? Uh, and that I think is gonna be a trend even when this COVID thing ends, if it does end soon, um, it's gonna be a trend. People are gonna be accepting this kind of work and the industry is gonna to have to accommodate for that. There's no question. So uh, how is it gonna look like at the end? Nobody knows. Uh, but one thing that I think everybody can agree with is that everyone is looking for the new thing, is trying to understand how the industry is gonna function and trying to get in. And that effort will, by definition, generate a new look and a new path. And that path is gonna become a path for folks to join the industry. In this sense, it's gonna open up doors that were not open before. All right. Um, what would you say is your proudest moment in your career so far, American Thief? Mm, well, it's funny, cause like, um, huh, I don't know if it's American Thief. Um, I don't know, I think like, if I, you know, it's funny cause what is the proudest moment? I don't know, man. Like I was doing a documentary when I was 20 years old and there was a guy who um, wanted to talk to me. It was like, a, I was in Bangladesh. It was like a rickshaw puller, rickshaw driver, peddler, what, you know, whatever you call it. And he called me to his house and he had a, a letter for me. He was begging for a job, right? And then we filmed him and I, I still kept that letter. It was very moving. And it was such a cultural shock. I was 20 and I, I, was, I was trying my best to, you know, to do the best by that guy and you know and i was proud because even though i do make, they make so many mistakes in that production like not recognizing how different culture worked and i, I thought i knew that but looking looking in retrospect i made so many mistakes some of them bad uh and but i remember that guy and i think like being open to him uh and looking him in the eye and having that moment uh i was proud that i i I wasn't thinking about it. I just, I was proud that I was there in the moment. And it's funny because you asked me that and that moment came to mind. Uh, it's a film that was never finished. I'm actually editing right now. It's, I was 20, I'm 40, it's been 20, 20 years. Oh. And, and that might have been my greatest, the greatest moment personally, I think. Um, I mean, this is totally off subject, mm -hmm. but I think some of the best films I've ever mm -hmm. seen were the ones that just, which just seemed they just took forever. Like, um, did you see the uh, my octopus teacher? Not yet. No. Ten did you years. like it? Yeah, it's ten years. Ten, yeah. So I'm looking forward to this one when you finish it. Dude, it's like we got um, we got distribution. Uh, it's gonna be opening theaters, vir virtual theaters, by like in two weeks. Oh, and sweet. yeah, and then um, hopefully by next year. I mean, likely I should say, it's gonna be in you know on 
all the mediums that you, that you used to, to watch in films. So it's done, you know, just taking care of like the, some legal stuff and like the usual stuff that you have to do when you, when you distribute a film. But the film is, is done. We, we got it. You know, it's out there, you know. By the way, it's playing in the next screening is I think October 23rd or 24th in Maine. Uh, and sorry, Maine was the opening in uh, Memphis, you know, so the, at the Memphis uh, International Film Festival. So I'm sorry, the Memphis in the Memphis Film Festival. There's so many international film festivals they were in that got confused. This, this fantastic film festival called the In the Memphis Film Festival, which I'm super, super proud to be uh, playing at, especially because it's our southern premiere in the United States. And um, it's, you know, it's going on right now. Tickets are available. I think folks should, folks should, should check it out because it's a great festival. And besides my film, there's a lot of other films that are fantastic, you know, and we are in the narrative competition, the main competition, and just to be there surrounded by some, and I've seen some of these great films already you know, in, in different festivals. It's just a great honor. And I think the, the, the audiences will, would really enjoy, um, you know, that festival. I'm just promoting it because I believe in, in their message actually. So I'm so happy to be, to be screening there. I'll definitely keep an eye out for that. That's yeah. cool, man. Um... Okay, I already asked you that. What role does social media play in the promotion of, the, of your films? Mm -hmm. What about it? What role? Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I was having a difficult time trying to word that one because I know social media has become a, a even bigger promotional tool. I mean, before COVID, so I was just wondering how does that play into um, you know the promotion of your uh, films? It's, it's everything. It's really the only promotion. Um, and even when it plays physically in a film festival, they, 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 yesterday it played in, uh, in the Woodstock uh, Film Festival, and it's going to play physically, you know, in a drive-in uh, in, in Memphis, as well as uh, internet. Even those physical um, screenings, they, they rely on social media to, you know, to get people to go there. And more than that, uh, Didi, like, this, this film really operates in a hyperlink structure. It's, it is, there's, of course, it's three X structures, more or less in this film, but I say that the primary structure of it is the hyperlink structure, right? There's a lot of windows of information coming at you from all sides simultaneously and kind of choose which one you pay attention to the most. If you've seen the movie, you know how it, how it is. Uh, and, and that's directly connected to the social media world that we, that we live in. That doesn't mean that I, I love the world we live in, uh, but like it means that like for anybody with a product that is a media product social media is everything and we have a very big campaign that is being launched like slowly with not any money involved is more like a word of mouth that turns into you know the sharing of, of like um, uh, information in, in the trailer etc etc and people signing up for, for our website and because we're doing that like beginning to get like like what we want in terms of like a, a national um, a national, you know, uh, image of what this film is and the perception that is super important because it is and it's super timely because it is. And folks are catching up to that through social media. So I would say that our strategy here in many ways, our only possible strategy, our only path to get this film out there is precisely social media in every single capacity. I couldn't agree more, man. Um, Final question, sadly. Um, what advice would you give to an aspiring filmmaker? I mean, first of all, stop calling uh, yourself aspiring. Uh, just the filmmaker and the story. Uh, and just the levels of ex experience where you are in your career would differ. Uh, but you got you to remember, think about this. Um, let me think about an example of somebody that I really appreciate. Like Werner Herzog, a great filmmaker. If you think about Werner Herzog, Today, obviously, he is a filmmaker. But think about Werner Herzog at 15, right? Wasn't he a filmmaker at 15, right? Of course he was. It's, he hadn't done the work, but if he didn't think of himself, and I know for a fact that he did uh, as a filmmaker, then he wouldn't be what we call an accomplished filmmaker today, right? So uh, a, a, a quote-unquote aspiring filmmaker has to understand and come to terms with the fact that they are a filmmaker and a story, and that they can make films right now uh, with what they have available to them. You know, it's part of the, the, the one of the first answers here. We're talking about, um, you know, the film homemade and the future of the industry. Folks, if you're a filmmaker who is 15, 16, 17, you're just starting out, whatever, 20, you know, uh, in kinds of, in, in, or more or less our age, 
uh, you in starting out, all you need to do is to make a damn movie uh, and do the best you can and, and don't think about it. And then make another one and another one. And immediately, you can't just make one. I have to make one and another and another constantly. Because if you make it, that makes just one film, it's amazing. But it might be, this person might be swollen, swollen by like life uh, and industry. And then there's no time. If you make two or three, it becomes a pattern and people perceive you as like this person delivers, they, they, they have a lot of work, somebody I want to invest on. So you got to make film after film. And if they turn out to be bad, who cares? You know, uh, you don't have that control, right? You can only do the best you can at that given moment. Time, life, audiences, yourself also will determine if the film is good or bad after the fact. You can only do your best. And always do your best. You know, that's like a prerequisite. Once that's taking place and you made your film, put out in the world and let the world decide. And if you get a bad review, who cares? Make another one and then another one until you're satisfied with the, the kind of work that you put out. And hopefully your first, second one will be great, you know. But the chances are clearly that it will not. Uh, and that shouldn't be, um, you know, uh, the tutorial. You have to continue. That's it. Filmmakers, there's no such a thing as aspiring filmmakers. Filmmakers, they might be aspiring to get someplace. That's okay. But filmmakers are filmmakers. End of story. It, it comes with a, it's a faith, you know. You either have it or you don't, you know. Right. Man, um, I can't thank you enough for doing this. Thank you. Um, you are a national treasure, man. I, I appreciate you. <laughs> Man, like, you know, I told you before that, that, that we started recording this, like, it's entirely reciprocal, you know, and people should understand this. Like, uh, if I, I'm 100% certain that it's a much bigger honor to me to be talking to you right now than it is to you. Uh, because, you know, I was a teacher, you were there in a class. Do you know why we teach for? Precisely to see if there's a chance somebody listens to us and we communicate. It's, it's our own way of like making an impact. And that's really what we, we look for, you know, and if we can be helpful in the process, oh my God, we, you know, so like right now, hearing that from you, it, it, you just gave me so much. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. I've definitely seen some of um, my former classmates that were in there with um, you definitely putting everything that you taught us to work. Like, just seeing um, their IG stories and everything and the movies that they're making. It's just, yeah, we listened, man. <laughs> we definitely <laughs> no, listened. We should, we should, we should come up with a, another meeting so we can all hang out and we can, you know, can listen to what you, what you guys have to tell me now. <laughs> oh, that'd be, man, that'd you know, be I'm, great, man. I'm down. You just let me know. Like, you know, it's like, you know, we are, I see, I see all, you know, all of us is like peers. You know, so I, I, I would love to just hang out and, you know, it's just someone, you know, let's talk whenever you guys are, already you know shoot me a, an email or something and you know and let's make it happen oh dude man i appreciate that all right let me all right. hit hit the stop button on this thing okay.